So today we're gonna to break down 28 reasons that you'll do poorly in school. Now, instead of telling you what to do, I'm gonna share with you what often leads to bad results for most students. You'll find your brain automatically come up with the solutions of how to fix it. And the idea for today's episode was inspired by a few YouTube videos that I came across that just did this really nicely. One in particular was Alex Harmozzi, who breaks down the 28 reasons that you'll fail as a business person. If you guys are interested in that topic, I'll link it down below. But today we're gonna to break down 28 reasons that you will fail in school. And at the very end, we're gonna do a rapid round and flip each of these 28 from going from reason to fail to reason succeed. Let's get into it. So number one reason you're going to be a terrible student is that you think that more time is going to lead you to better grades because you just forgot all of those examples where you spent an hour or two and realized that they actually gave you no impact whatsoever. Number two is that you spend too little time in the review phase. Instead, you think that it's a good idea to actually spend as much time watching lectures, reading the syllabus, learning, highlighting, and thinking that that is effective, but then realizing that none of it actually caused you any retention. Number three, you have no guarantee free time because you think that you're not allowed to, you feel guilty to because you need to spend time studying. Number four, you're gonna be a terrible student because you pay attention to what everyone else is doing. So you're always finding yourself comparing your current situation to your peers and wondering, maybe you should be switching your strategy around because so-and-so Sally down the street is getting good grades by doing flashcards. You hate flashcards, but maybe you should do it. So number five and the fifth reason you're going to be a terrible student is that you are comfortable. Eventually you will get the grade that you want and you think that you've made it. There's nothing to change. That is a great recipe to success on exactly how to become a terrible student. Number six, you think that you'll have more free time later because that's really worked well for us so far. But you're gonna convince yourself that in doing more work now is going to be worth it and later on you're going to figure out how to make time for your priorities. Number seven, you're going to focus more on the numbers over the stories because getting good grades is really what helps you separate yourself from the pack until you realize that actually it's not. Number eight in our recipe to become a terrible student is that you have an inadequate amount of sleep and exercise because let's be real, sleep is for the week and you just simply don't have time to exercise. Number nine is that you have no regards for your nutrition. Pretty self-explanatory but pretty much anything within grabbing distance is fair game and then you have to get back to study. Number ten, you have no structured plan. The goal is simply just get as much work done as possible and try to be as little behind as possible. Number 11 is that you're going to change your study methods all the time. This is a perfect recipe to become a terrible student because it's always going to be below average in all the techniques that you choose because you're going to just move on to the next one. Number 12 is you're going to use way too many resources thinking that there's always going to be a magic bullet that's going to help you get the grades you want. So you just keep adding more to your repertoire until you realize you have no time for any of it. Number 13, you disconnect from your support group because let's be honest, you have no time as a busy student to give extra time to the people who are valuable to you. They'll understand and you'll make time for them when you have all the studying stuff figured out. Number 14 and very similar, you're gonna make your entire life 100% about school because you have to go all in to succeed. Number 15, and this is one of my favorite ways to become a terrible student, is that you spend way too much time learning how to learn, spending hours on YouTube, Reddit, etc., trying to figure out what other people are doing and never actually putting into action. Number 16, and I am guilty of this, you are letting your ego determine your behavior. When things are going well, you feel great. When things aren't, you blame the rest of the world. Number 17, and this one's pretty unfortunate, but a great way to become a terrible student is that you don't learn from the small moments. Number 18, also really guilty of doing this, you count the clock until it's time to go home because then you can actually get to work or actually finally get some rest and relief from this crazy busy world. Number 19, cramming. Number 20, being lazy. Pretty self-explanatory, let's move on. Number 21, waiting to be motivated because to become a successful student, you need to have that constant drive and motivation going forward. Number 22, and ooh, this is a good one if you wanna be a terrible student, is to not have a go-to study method. It has the making of a perfect anxiety attack if the professor suddenly decided to move the test till tomorrow and you have no idea what you're gonna do. Next, and another common reason you're gonna be a terrible student is you have a poor use of your energy and you have no idea how to allocate different tasks based off of how you're feeling. Number 24, and oh, these students are absolutely my favorite. You complain when things don't go your way because it's always the world's fault. Number five, you think that you're the only one going through the actual struggles. Number 26, when you take a quiz and test, you're so filled with anxiety, and this is a great way to become a terrible student. You only focus when you don't know something and you focus on the points that you lose. Number 27, a terrible student loves to focus so much on the outputs and identifies themselves by the results that they get. And then finally, number 28, recipe to become a terrible student is to focus on just being cookie cutter because as long as you're getting good grades, and going with the flow, you're gonna be okay. Now, that is a lot and definitely a lot of it was tongue in cheek, but let's go ahead and break down really quickly the actual things you can do to become a successful student, starting with number one, where you can actually focus on being more efficient each and every week. Actually make sure that you can make your review the majority of your learning. Make sure you schedule an hour for yourself each day because that's truly how you stay motivated. Actually have tunnel vision, use your classmates as motivation, but once you figure out what you're gonna be doing is your next step, stop focusing on what they're doing and get to work. Always ask, how can I make this better? Never be comfortable even if you're doing well and succeeding. 
Stop thinking that you're gonna have more free time. If anything, it's gonna be the opposite later on. So make sure that your free time is a priority now so you can get better at using it when you're busier. Be irresistible by making sure your story and not your grades start to sell you. Make sure that you're sleeping an average of seven to eight hours a day and exercising four to five times a week for at least 30 minutes a day. Stay away from foods that drain your energy and instead focus on how you can feel your body to perform at its optimal level. Instead of having no structured plan, actually schedule both your day and your week as if you intend to be successful. Instead of changing from study Study method to study method, stick to a plan instead of making 180 degree U-turn changes, never really being good at any of them. Instead of using too many resources, commit to one to two, because again, it's better to use a good resource consistently than a great resource occasionally. Always keep your support group, including your families, your loved ones, and your friends in your corner because they're going to be the ones that are going to help you when you struggle and you will struggle. So make sure you have cutoff times and boundaries between school and your personal life. Stop trying to consume information on how to actually study and actually take some of the information you learn and put it into action and then continue to optimize. Instead of letting ego drive your behavior, understand that on one end, if things are going your way, you're not suddenly better than other people. And if on the other end, if things aren't going your way, you're not suddenly worse. Remember that every moment, even the small ones has a lesson, not just the ones in between your PowerPoint slides. Instead of looking at the clock as a countdown, ask yourself what you're truly trying to escape. Now instead you can use those small moments to help you on your journey. Stop making cramming a reasonable option and stop giving excuses for why you're behind and ask yourself instead how you can be more efficient. Instead of being lazy, get to work because you know your future self will thank you. And instead of waiting to be motivated, understand that you don't always need the drive to work. Sometimes you just need the discipline, which creates an internal motivation that continues to grow. Always have a go-to study method and particularly ask the question, what would I do if the test was tomorrow? to help you identify that method. Make sure you work on your most important activities during those times where you have the most energy and then use those lulls throughout the day to work on activities that are really easy to say yes to that you still have to get done. Instead of complaining when things don't go your way, remember no one really likes to hear you complaining anyway, so always remember that you are in control. Stop blaming your circumstances. And on the flip side, remember that everyone is struggling. You are not alone. Some of us are just better at hiding it than others. Instead of focusing on the points that you'd be losing on a test or a quiz, instead focus on those questions that you feel super confident on and use that as motivation for the rest of the exam. Instead of focusing on the output, focus on the input, such as studying hard and being interested, even if the grade doesn't go your way. And then finally, stop trying to be like everyone else because eventually somebody's gonna ask you what makes you different and you need to have that answer. Now, if this breakdown is helpful, that means you wanna be a top student. That means you probably should check out all of these study strategies that helped me become a top student in medical school, as well as this study strategy on how I remembered everything that I read. As always, my friends, thanks for being a part of my journey. Hopefully I was a little help to you guys on yours and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.